Hey guys, it's Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. All right, it is time for the August piercing and tattoo Q&A. This will be the fifth Q&A. Like I said, I'm gonna try to make this a monthly thing. So if you're interested in having your question answered in a future one, leave them below in the comments. This is gonna be the only video that I look at for questions for the September Q&A. So just keep that in mind. I did ask for people to submit their questions on Instagram. That's where my biggest community is other than here on YouTube. So if you do have questions, you can also ask them on Instagram. I did get quite a few for this month, so I'm gonna try and breeze through them pretty fast. What do you think about black body jewelry and also cheap jewelry? Is expensive better? Just starting off with just black body jewelry. I like it. I mean, I personally don't have many pieces that are just black, but I do have a septum clicker that's solid black. I do have some nostril ones that are solid black. And I do have a conch piece that is solid black, but it's a retainer, technically. Like it's that material. I don't have many pieces, but I think they look pretty cool. I like the look of them. I just don't have a lot. As for is expensive better? Yes, always. Like no matter what, there's a reason why it's expensive. So expensive is going to be better for your body. I mean, it's, it's the age old case of you get what you pay for. How do you feel about a 13 year old getting a septum pierced? And do you recommend like an open ring or a closed one? Okay, so you mean like horseshoe or clicker? Okay, first of all, I personally, I don't recommend a 13 year old getting that done just because you're still growing at that point. I mean, I don't know how much your nose grows or like changes or anything. Personal opinion, I don't think a 13 year old should get that done. If you wanna get it done and your parent says it's okay and the shop you're going to says it's okay, then by all means, go for it. But personally, Mm, mm, uh, mm. If I had a 13 year old kid, I wouldn't let him get it done. Just personal. How many months did you wait to change your septum piercing after you got it pierced? Okay, so I've talked about this before. I normally would have waited three months. That's like my standard for waiting for most of my piercings. However, I got it done in March of 2017 and I had to have surgery at the beginning of April 2017. So I changed my septum out after three weeks not recommended at all. However, my septum was fine. It didn't hurt, it didn't ache, it didn't get crusty or anything like that. I didn't completely botch it up. It was just timing was bad. But normally I would have waited three months, but for mine, I only waited three weeks. So do as I say, not as I do. I got my navel pierced about six months ago and it ended up rejecting, sad face. Do you think I should try again or stay safe and leave it alone? As someone who had hers reject or really just pierce in the wrong spot several years ago, I personally have been wanting to get mine redone, but I'm just so scared that it's going to be as painful as it was before. Like the actual piercing part wasn't painful. It was just the aftermath. And I chalk it up to the fact that it was pierced in the wrong spot. That, that's why it hurt so bad. But just the, I, I don't know, just going through that again really terrifies me as much as I want to get it done. So if you want to get it done and maybe go to a different shop, I mean, if it full on rejected, you probably wouldn't want to get it again. But if it was like mine where it was pierced incorrectly and there's a possibility that it would be fine, just go to a different shop then I would do that. What do you think about a snug Pearson? I think they're cute. I personally like them. I would like one. I don't know which one I'd want it on. I think maybe this ear I'd want it on just because of the layout. They apparently have a really high rejection rate and so that kind of terrifies me, but I think they're cute. They have a really high rejection rate and so that kind of scares me. What are the signs of a Pearson bump going away? It disappearing? No, I'm just kidding. I would say just the decrease in size of the bump going away, also maybe decreased pain, because I know sometimes bumps can hurt. So maybe, maybe just decrease in size, decrease in pain, decrease in any fluids that may be releasing from the bump, because sometimes that happens. Also depends on the kind of bump you're talking about. Are you talking about like a keloid or are you talking about just the little bump? Basically just anything that would be standard, like just it, it going away, it diminishing. Does it look smaller? Then it's probably on its way out. What to do about nose piercing bumps? Ah, uh, the lovely nose piercing bump because they are so common. Basically just do your salt soaks. And if you're finding that after a while, salt soaks aren't doing anything, first of all, make sure that you're doing them correctly, find the appropriate measurement for them. If you're finding that that's not helping, I know I went to a dermatologist and they shot me up with, with something. I always forget what it was. 
like cortisone or something like that. I don't remember. Having them sh shoot it up with something can help with that a little bit more expensive and invasive, but if you're finding the salt soaks are not working or like tea tree oil or any of the other standard methods, that might be a possibility if you're willing. What got you to get double nostril piercings? By the way, they look awesome. Well, thank you. A lot of people like to point out that they're crooked. So hi, they're on my face, I know that. They're not perfectly aligned. So thank you for saying they look awesome. I appreciate that. I don't know. I really just like the look of them, one on each side. I mean, I'd like to get either a high nostril on either side or a double nostril where they're side by side. Haven't quite decided yet which one I'd want, but I just like the look of them. But I think I saw like a picture on Pinterest of someone with that set up and I was like, ooh, I like that, let me get it. Will you ever get an industrial piercing? I briefly thought about getting an industrial piercing because I saw so many cute pieces of jewelry for industrial piercings, but I just don't think like with the layout of everything going on in my ears right now, I just, I'm happy with it. And so I don't really wanna add something else to it because it wouldn't require me to take something away and I don't wanna do that. So at this point, no. Hi Gretchen, how do you come up with new ideas for your new tattoos? So this is, this is an interesting one. If you haven't noticed, I really like animals and nature. So the majority of my tattoos are animals combined with some element of nature. So like my squirrel has leaves and a sunflower near it. My hedgehog has flowers and strawberries. My crow over here has like a skull with amaryllis blooms. I have hydrangeas on my back because they're one of my favorite flowers. I have a cat surrounded by tulips. That's like my primary focus are animals and like elements of nature. So I just really come up with, I like this animal and I'd like it to be surrounded by this kind of nature. And that's what my artist, like that's her shtick. So I'm just like, I want these, go for it and she designs it and I always fall in love with it and that's pretty much how I decide on my new tattoos. What's one piercing you want but would never get? I think at this point, it's the smiley. The smiley piercing, that's this one right here, the gums up there, just because I think it's really cute, especially when you smile, it peeks through, but it's so close to the teeth and it's right up against your teeth and your gums that I just feel like it's not safe for gum erosion or teeth enamel. It's cute, but it's not one to keep long-term. When are you making your forward helix a double? I had hoped to do that actually last week, but just time got away from me. I wasn't able to, and I'm not entirely sure when I'm gonna be able to. I got a lot of stuff coming up. I just don't have time to go get it done, but maybe the end of August. I was really hoping for the beginning of August, but it might be more toward the end of August. We'll have to see about time. After changing a heel, Pearson, is it normal, expected that it starts hurting again. Absolutely. You've irritated it. You've gotten in there, even though it's healed, even though it's perfectly fine or acts perfectly fine, getting in there and just like fiddling with it, changing the jewelry and just messing with it some can sometimes irritate it. So it's perfectly normal for it to hurt or maybe even bleed a little bit. You're fine. Unless it starts pussing, then you got a problem. When will you be getting your lip pierced? It would be so cool if you vlogged it or something, smiley face. So I wouldn't be able to actually vlog the whole piercing itself because some piercers just don't like that and they don't appreciate it. And I've already asked my piercer, hey, do you mind this? And she's not particularly keen on it. She She's not gonna be the kind that's just like, oh, hell no. But if she's not comfortable with it, then I'm not gonna push it because I like my piercer way too much. As for when I'm gonna get it done, I know I've been saying that for a really long time, but my plan of action is my brother is getting married the middle of September. I have to be around my grandparents who are the one set of people that I will cover up and hide things for because just in older age, you're not gonna change their minds on anything. What's the sense in upsetting them? So my thought process is once the wedding's all done, I go get the lip piercing done because then I can at least count on the fact that I may not see them for six weeks and I can give it time to heal enough where I can go buy a retainer that when I do see them, it'll be good to go. Does that make sense? I wouldn't want to irritate it by changing it out almost immediately. So my thought process is as soon as the wedding is over, like maybe even that week after the wedding happens, I get it done. Then that six week period goes through where I probably won't see my grandparents and then at that time can change it to a retainer. Very convoluted, but they're your family and sometimes you just gotta placate them. In England, we measure length of jewelry in millimeters and I notice yours are inches. What's the difference? There's no difference. They all equal out to one another. Just, just like, you know, here we measure temperature primarily in Fahrenheit, whereas other places do Celsius. There's no difference. It's just dependent 
on where you live, what the preference is. But there's really no difference. Do you recommend getting multiple piercings in one sit-in? Love you, greetings from Argentina. It depends on where you're getting the multiple piercings. Like, is it all on one ear? Then yes, that's fine because then you can sleep on the other side and not bother this one. But if you're getting like one over here or two over here, then you'd have to be a back sleeper. I mean, I'm personally a side sleeper, so that would not work out for me. It really just depends on the general area where you're getting multiple piercings. If they're spread out, you might want to reconsider it, but if it's all within the same area, then it might be fine. How soon after piercing do you recommend stretching to the next size? There's there's like some chart on the internet that recommends how long you wait. I mean, if you're getting your lobes done and then you want to stretch, I personally would wait until it's fully healed, which I'm not entirely sure what the lobes are because I haven't gotten my lobes done since I was in high school, so I haven't really paid much attention to the healing time for that. But I would wait maybe like six months or even a year to like give it give it a good amount of time. Though I know some people do not wait that long because that's a long time if you think about it. At least until it's fully healed and you know it. What does it feel like to get a septum piercing and what does your first tattoo feel like? So for me getting my septum pierced, it just felt like my nose was getting irritated. Like, you know when you're about to sneeze, that, that feeling you get and you're constantly going like, it's kind of like that. And I know I sneezed God knows how many times after I got it actually done. So that's kind of the best way to describe it. As for getting your first tattoo, depends on the area, depends on the size, depends on the artist who's doing it, like if they're heavy handed or not. For me, so those that don't know, my first one is my book. And it seriously felt like cat scratches just constantly going at my wrist. As someone who grew up with a lot of cats around her, I was used to that. It wasn't bad at all. Some people it proves to be very painful, some people not, but that's the best way that I can describe how it feels during the process and then after the process when it's healing, it feels like a really bad sunburn. So cat scratches to sunburn. When you went from a six millimeter to an eight millimeter, did you have more pain, swelling, or troubles with it after? So for those that aren't aware, six millimeter is the two gauge, eight millimeter is the zero gauge. Well, according to this question, you assume that I'm at a zero gauge, which I may be, but, at the time of you asking this question, I was not. I just stretched, and so this video will come later in the week. But no, I didn't feel much pain or swelling. Little bit of a pinch on my left ear, because that's my bad ear, whereas my right ear is my good ear, but that's about it. I haven't noticed any swelling at all with any of my stretches, and just brief pain for like a few hours after, and it's one of those pains where it's just like, eh, it's trying to get used to the stretch, and so just take some Tylenol and you're fine. Would you ever consider getting your belly button pierced again? I mentioned this already, I want to so bad, but just the idea of going through the pain that I went through before, just going through that again, terrifies me. And I know if I went to my typical piercer now, it would be pierced in the right spot, and so there would be a good chance of me not experiencing that pain again but just that idea of that pain again is terrifying. So I don't know if I will get it done. I want to, but I don't know. Like that's my honest answer is I don't know if I will just because it scares me. Is it bad when you are cleaning your piercing and it starts to bleed a little? No, nope, not at all. It's, it's pretty standard. You're irritating it even through cleaning it. So it's just, its way of expelling some stuff that needed to get out. Would you ever get an antitragus or snug? So for those that are unaware, your snug is this part, whereas your antitragus is like down here. I would not get an antitragus just because, I don't know, I, I'm personally not in love with the look of it, but I would, I would get a snug. I just wouldn't because it rejects more often than not. So I don't really want to go through that. What was your pain level for your conch? I really want mine done. Unlike everyone else in the world who says their conch hurt like I don't know what, mine really didn't hurt. Now the aftermath was painful. Like about an hour after I got it done, it was throbbing and I was like, oh my God, I need to rip my ear off. But the actual piercing itself didn't hurt at all. And then cleaning it, it did get a bump as I am prone to get, but it, it wasn't bad. What is your next tattoo going to be and where is it going to be? Getting one anytime soon. So I have actually made a decision to not get any more tattoos for the rest of 2019. We'll see if that actually holds up. But my, my thought process for that is because I got so many at one time that my body was just like, yo, we got to chill because this hurts. I have a pretty high pain tolerance, but it got to the point where after two hours, I was like, I need to tap out. Like, this is bad. So I'm trying to give my body a breather, trying to let it calm down and chill. And so I don't think I'm gonna get any more for 2019, 
But the next one that I wanna get is a raccoon or a bat eating some kind of fruit because I love those videos that float around on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter of raccoons eating like grapes or bats eating bananas and I think it's just so adorable and that's what I want. I think a bat eating a banana like on my forearm right here would be so cute. And the final question is, when you get your double helix done, end up allergic to the jewelry, can you get the same spot re-pierced or no? If, it, if it's more a case of you're allergic to the jewelry, then change the jewelry out. Don't take the piercing out entirely, just change the jewelry. That solves all sorts of problems. Now, if you took it out, it closed up and you wanna get it redone, again I don't see why it would be a problem to get it reproduced in the same spot keep in mind that there is going to be some scar tissue there because it was already traumatized by the needle so it might hurt more but I don't see why you couldn't get it done in the same spot if you get a piercing and you're allergic to the jewelry don't take it out just change the jewelry now if it's pierced incorrectly and you need to do the whole thing over again, then that's another thing. But otherwise, I don't see why it would be a problem. Just know that it might hurt worse than you think. All right, those are it for my questions for my August Q&A. If you have any responses to any of these questions, you can leave them below as well. If you have any questions, again, for the September Q&A, leave them below because on YouTube, this is gonna be the only video that I look at for questions for the September one. But if you are following me on Instagram, you can also wait for the question to pop up in my stories. But that is it for this extremely long Q&A video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. Go on down there and hit that subscribe button wherever it may be because I don't know. Even though I do, this is just my shtick now. Also hit that notification bell in case you want to know when I upload and in case YouTube wants to let you know when I upload because I would really appreciate it. And until next time, bye guys! Bye.